in sonship. Remember, we talk about sonship here. My wife has the, uh, some kind of, uh, we run some uh, themes and topics about sonship. So he has written a book about sonship. And this book has been translated to, into six languages. And four other languages are on the way. Praise God. By the grace of God, I will introduce to you Pastor Hank Brookerman. Praise God. Good morning. For me, it's so good to be here. It has been a long time, and now uh, I'm back in Delft at Redeem. Very good. And uh, I love to be here. Yeah. Um, maybe it's good to, uh, to just um, um, show you the book that I've... This, was my, this is my first book, Living in Sonship. It's uh, in English, in Dutch, in German. Um, uh, it will be in, it is in Albanian language. Uh, it is ready to be printed in Farsi. So the, the people in Iran, they will also be able to, to read it. And it will be uh, in inter on internet so they can even uh, through internet be uh, able to access uh, to, to, to this, uh, get access to this book. Uh, my latest book is just out for one week, and, uh, but that's just in Dutch. So those who, who, who can read Dutch, it's closer to the father. It's the next step following on, uh, on, this, on the first book. I brought a small book table with me, so afterwards you can uh, feel free to, to come and have a look. Um, Today, yeah, we are, uh, it's, a special, it's a special day and I have a special topic. Uh, I know it is, the theme is watch and pray. And, uh, oh, the one on the camera, I hope you will, I can't stand still. It's <laughs> too difficult for me. I have to walk and move a little bit. Um, uh, watch and pray, but... It is towards the Father. So we need to know the Father for who he really is. And um, uh, maybe you think, um, I know that God is a good Father. I know that God is love, the Bible tells me so. Uh, but if you, mm, if you would really ask someone, what is what is, your, what is the image of the Father for you? I think we will get different answers. It's like every Christian in the world, every church is based on the Bible. The same Bible. But how many different churches do we have? So there are differences. Still God is one. So if we read about God, what do you think? We will have many different images of the Father. <laughs> but it's not what we think that he is <laughs> that matters. It is who he really is. And I believe that uh, the topic, it's not a topic, it's a revelation about the Father heart of God. And God is revealing his heart to the church more than ever before. It is like in, in the history, you can, when you look back, you can see the plan of God. Um, uh, there has been a time that uh, we call it the dark ages. And actually, the church didn't know who Jesus really was. Then there was a man, Luther, and he talked about a personal relationship again, that you, 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 could, you should not just go to church. No, you should have a personal relationship with Jesus. And so he brought that revelation that he received from God to the church. 
So there was a new revelation about Jesus. In, in 1903-04, there was an, a, a special revelation in the United States, Azusa Street. The revelation of who? What was revealed? Again? The Holy Spirit. So until 1904, there were no Pentecostal churches. They didn't exist. So there was not an understanding, not a clear revelation about the Holy Spirit. God sent the revelation. So there is now a revelation about Jesus, who he really is. The word of God, the living word. Revelation about the Holy Spirit. And in these days, there is a revelation of the father heart of God. Now, so it's not important that you only get access to the father heart through teaching, but you need to experience him. If God says, I am a God of love, it's not meant to read about it only. It's to experience that love. That love should change you from the inside out. Well, um, let me ask you. Here and there, I ask questions. I think it's important. So, so, so please help me. Don't stay silent. <laughs> but when I ask an, an, a question, I like some, some answers. I like some people to speak. And uh, uh, let me start with an, um, with an uh, easy question. Is it important to hear the voice of God? Yes or no? Thank you. You're wonderful. <laughs> and all of you have, a, have it right. So just, just keep it in mind. One point for all of those who said yes. <laughs> At the end, when you get 10 points, there will be a free book. But I decide when you get a point, yes or no. <laughs> At home, don't be disappointed because no one will get to 10 points here. <laughs> okay, so next to hearing, when you've heard the voice of God, what is then the most important thing? Obedience. That's what I thought always. Now, um, this is my topic. There are two kinds of obedience. The question is, does God want your obedience just like that and actually we have always been taught yes God wants your obedience that is important and today I like to challenge you a little bit um, let me um, let me be frank it of course God loves your obedience but when I say there are two different kinds of obedience, let me tell you what God does not want. He doesn't want your obedience by just following the commandments. Again, just God just does not want your obedience because he puts you under a law. He loves your obedience when it comes from your heart. He loves your obedience when you do it as an act of love. Not because you have to follow the commandments. Um, instead of God telling you just what you need to do and you have to obey him because he says so, 
He loves to involve your life in it. He wants to give you an experience, good, but also a bad experience. He, he wants to give you that experience so that afterwards you can, you can, after having an experience, you can make a new choice to come and follow him. Let me, let me, let me give you an, expl let me explain it. Uh, the best explanation is, of course, through uh, the prodigal son, the parable of the prodigal son. L look, at, look at this. Let me, let me ask you a question. So here we go. We can get, go to two points now. <laughs> the, the, the younger son, the prodigal son, when he was still at home, was he obedient or disobedient to his father? What do you think? He wasn't. Because he didn't want to serve his father. He wanted to go away. Do you think that was an act of obedience to his father? To ask for the inheritance and go and leave home, leave his father, do nothing for him. Do you think that was an act of obedience? No. So, keep this in mind. The younger son was disobedient. What was the, father, the father's response? You should stay at home. You should work for me. You need to be obedient. Did he say such a thing to him? No. This is interesting because it's a parable. And a parable is an example for us. What the father is like. So when you want to do something that is not correct, that is you, you will not directly find the father on your way telling you, you should not do it. You, you understand? If, if the father would have said, no, you are not getting your inheritance. He could have done that. If he would not have had any money, he had no way to, to go to and, and spend anything. He was forced to be at home. And the father says, such kind of obedience I don't want. He says, go. And, and, and we have learned, like what the Bible says, go and sin no more. And what the, what, what the father here says, go and sin. This is strange. The father allowed him because, and he gave him the possibility because he gave his share of the inheritance. And with that share, he could, he could do all kinds of things that were not coming from the heart of the father. And the father knew. And still he gave him the possibility to go and sin. Why? Because when everything was finished, he had an experience, a negative experience. I am no, not able to do it myself. Now, now, the father could have told him, but then it was a commandment. Now, he gets an experience here in his heart. And because of this experience, he says, let me go back to my father's house. Was there anyone forcing him to go back home? No. It was voluntarily. And that's why the father was rejoicing. He says, look, he's coming back. I don't have to order him. I don't have to put commandments on him. I don't need the law. 
But because of the bad experience, there is a longing to come home. And even then, he came home not knowing who his father really was. Because he says, I'm not worthy to be your son. So, let me explain something. Um, because we need to understand uh, uh, the, the, the parable uh, and get it into, into our life, in our circumstances situation um, when the younger son left his house no let's start was he a son yes or no okay okay good so when you become born again are you a son or a daughter yes or no when the prodigal left home, was he still a son or not? He was. This is interesting. So he still was a son. The only thing is, was it for the father, was the father able to take care of him when he has left home? No. So leaving home made him an orphan. When you are an orphan, are you still a son or a daughter? Yes or no? You are. The difference is, are you living from sonship? No. You're living from being an orphan. Is it possible for an orphan to know his father? Yes or no? No. Be why not? Because there is no experience. There is no relationship. There is no intimacy. He can, he, it's possible for him that he heard about his father. Someone can talk about his father. But that does not change the orphan identity. Even the son coming home, making a right decision, didn't change him into sonship. Because on his way he said, I am not, I've sinned against heaven and you. And I am not worthy to be your son. This is orphan thinking. All of us. Everyone in the whole world. Everyone comes from an orphan position. This is where we are born. We are born as orphans. Why? Because Adam and Eve... Broke the relationship by sinning. So the spirit was gone. And God says, God is spirit. God says, I am spirit. Now mankind was flesh. And flesh and spirit can't be intimate. Can't become one. So what was needed is that mankind received the spirit again. That is why Jesus died. New life, eternal life, the spiritual life was added to us as we are. Now, this gives us the possibility to become one again with the Father. Only in intimacy with the Father you can really get to know him. Plus, it is only the father who can give you the identity of sonship. You can be a son, but you can still live from an orphan position. 
What, what is an orphan position? That is that you don't know who your father really is. Is it possible for an orphan to hear the voice of God? Yes or no? Yes. Is it possible for an orphan to be obedient? Yes or no? Yes. The only thing is, he will do it from an understanding that he has to. You have to be obedient. The orphan lives with the law. The orphan loves the law. A son lives by the law of love. That's a big difference. To love the law or to live by the law of love. Coming back to the parable, the older son, his, his older brother, um, was he obedient to his father? Yes or no? Ah, let me read it. Luke 15, 11. And he said, a certain man, uh, let me see. Oh, no, no, no. That was the, the younger son. Luke 15, 29. But he answered his father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. Sometimes I, I, uh, I use... The Passion Translation or the message from Peterson. I love uh, some different translations. It, it, it helps us to, to get things clear. So, he is saying, I have been slaving for you. And I never disobeyed your orders. Was the, dis was the obedience of the older son... Was the father happy with it, yes or no? No. Because it did not come from his heart. He was not happy. He was just obeying orders. Let me tell you, it's possible to serve God by just Obeying orders. Because you have to. Because it is said. Uh, it's said you, you should do it. And then you need to ask yourself a question. Is my father happy with what I do? You can read every day. Three chapters of the Bible. And you tell God, I've done my duty again. I read three chapters. Are you happy with me? <laughs> Reading the word of God. You should think, yes, the father is happy. But I, I'm not sure. Because he says, it's not what you do. But it is who you are. He says, if you stay in the orphan position, reading the Bible, being an orphan, I am not happy. Because as an orphan, it is impossible for you to carry my image. Because I am not an orphan, God says. I am a father. Jesus, he carried the image. He says, when you see me, you've seen the father. He is carrying the image of the father. He does what the father wants him to do. Not out of, out of uh, because of a commandment and the law. No, because it's his heart's desire. Because he knows his father. So, 
not being, this is something else, not being disobedient is not equal to the obedience that the Father wants. <laughs> once again, once again, this, this, this one, you need, to, you, need to, you need to think about it. So not being disobedient means you're not doing r the wrong thing. It doesn't equal, it's not the same as obedience to the Father. A, a orphan, it's possible for him, for him to not be disobedient. The older brother, he was not disobedient. He was obedient all the time. But that doesn't equal obedience to what the father wants. The father says, first of all, I like to make a transfer from being an orphan into sonship. And, and, and in that sonship, then I can give you the identity of sonship. And then you can live from sonship. Living from sonship is actually showing the father through your life. Hmm. Now, um, but there is more. Are you still with me? Hallelujah. Romans 5.19 For just as through Romans 5.19 For just as through the disobedience of one man the many were made sinners so because of the sin of Adam everyone that comes after Adam is in the same position a sinner. Why? Because we cannot do it from ourselves. Jesus says, I can do nothing from myself. Do you think you are more than Jesus? So, so realize this. You need to realize this. Uh, if Jesus says, I can do nothing from myself, why would you try? Why would you try to do it yourself? He says, I only do what the Father tells me. I, I only let the Father work through me. This, is, this, is, this, is, this has to do with um, that you are okay with finding yourself depending on the Father. Often, from our own nature, the old nature, we like to do it. We, we like to, to show him that, 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 we, that we, we, we like to do it for you, for you. <laughs> and, and, it, and it sounds good, but God says, <laughs> that's not where you are made for. Not to do it yourself. You're made to be depending on me. Look, this is God, this is man. He says, you fit perfectly in me and when you are intimate with me one with me you can do all things because I can do all things you receive my love you receive my strength you receive you receive you re you in the unity with the father so when you're an orphan you're on the distance you can work for the Father. You can read the Bible. You can pray for days. You can fast. You can do anything. An orphan can do all these religious things. And the Father says, it's not what you do. It's who you are. So I'm not interested. Listen to me, orphan. <laughs> I'm not interested in what you do. I want you to become one with me. Then we are talking about what you can do. Only then. Good. So the disobedience, we were halfway. Romans 5, 19. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one, many will be made righteous. 
God is not asking obedience from the sinner or from the orphan. He says, Jesus says, I was obedient. It was asked from me and I have done it. Obedience, where do I find it? Shall I try? No, Jesus says, it's with me. I can give you obedience. You know, when, you, when you're intimate with the Father, he says, I am the way to the Father. When you're intimate with the Father, when you, when you get to know him, then, then the, 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 the prodigal son, when he was home, when he came home, the father hugged him. The father embraced him. And then, then it happened. What happened? He experienced the love of the father. It was not told to him that the father loved him. He experienced it. Where did he experience it? In his, in his heart. And this is how it works. Through the experience in the heart, the structure in the mind is changed. It changed from orphan thinking into sonship. It was not by good decisions. It was not by following orders. It was not by his own obedience or disobedience. It was by the love of the Father that changed and touched his heart that he got to know, oh, he wants to be my Father. If he wants to be my Father, that means I can be his Son. And then, he, so, so, so obedience <laughs> starts with a hug and kissing. <laughs> obedience is not by the Lord. No, obedience starts with a hug and kissing and a party. You know, so he got to know, are you doing that for me? Oh, I, 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 you receive me? Oh, you love me? Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't take an exit. I can't because of Corona, but now. <laughs> I'm limited. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> Next time, someone, I take you and I say, come here and I hug you and I kiss you. <laughs> I told it to that man, not that woman. <laughs> because the prodigal son was a man. <laughs> so, so. So, but, but you know, uh, and, and, and then the party, so he says, wow, wow, oh, what a, are you doing that for me? I love you, dad, I love you, you know, and then he says, oh, I am obedient. It didn't take him any strength. He loved it to be obedient. He loved it to be close to his father, because when you are with your father, you're close to the party. <laughs> Barbecue. <laughs> now, let me, uh, let me tell you one thing. Um, an orphan is often afraid. He is afraid to do things wrong. He is afraid he is not doing it the right way. He is afraid he can't do it. He is afraid. And then he tries his best. Now that fear needs to be taken out. Let me tell you some, something. If you have fear for the Father, it's very difficult to have intimacy. I was in, in Pakistan and um, we had an, a meeting, an evening meeting, and I was talking about the prodigal son. And so I asked them, what do you think? Because I also ask questions in Pakistan. Uh, what do you think? Was the prodigal son did he have fear in his heart when he went home to meet his father? What do you think? Yes. So, so when I asked it, there, there were like mm, maybe 100 people in the small room. 
And they all said, yes. All of them, all of them, hey, yes. <laughs> so then I asked them a second question. Do you fear God when you have sinned? And all of them said, yes. Now, when we read the whole parable, was it necessary for the son to be afraid for his father? Yes or no? Ah. So, did he sin, the prodigal son? He did. Do you need to be afraid for Father God when you have sinned? Yes or no? No. No. Because the Father says, I knew that you would sin. I knew you can't do it by yourself. Now I'm not coming with punishment. I'm coming with grace and love. This is my father. This is what my father is like. He is coming with grace and love. And it is not because you don't sin because you tried and did all your... No, no. He says, I want to give you new life. And when you are in me, there is no sin. So we need, I like to encourage you to walk in my way. There is no 1 John, 1 John, 1 John 4, 18. 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out all fear because fear has to do with punishment the one who fears is not made in perfect love you know i understood that in pakistan many people are um, uh, muslims or from the uh, they are known with the islam and in islam you, you you're you're taught to fear Allah. You need to fear him. So, but then I looked to, to, do, to the Netherlands. And, and I realized that for many, many decades, the preachers have said, you better obey God. Otherwise, what tells you, you need to fear him. And then you say, uh, uh, the Bible tells me to fear God. No, 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 no. Not fear in the way of being afraid of him. But fear in awesome, what an awesome God. That's different from being afraid of God. So for you, it's for you, make it, make it personal. Is there fear in your heart when you think about God, especially when you have done something wrong? Let him come and take the fear away. Last part. Last part. Um, and this is Israel. The disobedience of Israel. Listen to this. I will read it first in, um, uh, the, uh, in English, but then I will read it in the message, the, the, the translation of Peterson. Romans 11, 30 to 33. It says, just as you were at one time disobedient to God. He talks about, for instance, us. Have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience. Their, who is meant by their, they? Who is that? 
their disobedience. Who, are, who, are, who is that? Israel. So let me, let me read it in this way. Just as you who were at one time disobedient to God have now received mercy as a result of Israel's disobedience. Oh, listen to this. <laughs> listen, listen to this. You receive grace. You receive the goodness of God. You receive access to the Father. You receive access to new life. You receive life and the Spirit because of the disobedience of Israel. Can you understand? Can you, what is this? What did this say? It says God is using the disobedience. Normally we would say God is using obedience. He needs obedience. He needs, this is what we are taught always, what we thought. And now the Bible tells us that it, God used the disobedience of Israel. This, this, this. This is something to think about. The disobedience, their disobedience. So they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. Listen, listen, I, I like to read this in, in the message because it becomes even more clear. The message. There was a time not so long ago when you were on the outs with God. You stood outside. But then the Jews slammed the door on him and things opened up for you. This is interesting. Now, they are on the outs. Oh. But with the door held wide open for you, they also have a way back in. And now listen to this. In one way or another, God makes sure that we all experience what it is to be on the outside. So that he can personally open the door and welcome us back in. He says, I need you to learn to teach you that you are depending on me. And when you're on the outside, the only way you can get in is through me. You see, the disobedience of the prodigal son was the way for the father that he could make him depending on the father. This is what he did in the prodigal, with the prodigal son. This is a parable. So he is teaching us. He's teaching you. He's teaching me. That it is possible that through the disobedience we realize our, where, where we are and that we can't live, with, live without God, without the Father. That we can't do it ourselves. Sometimes you need to go through that experience so that the Father says, Look, my son, my daughter, this is how I want to show you my love. And that is not normal love. This is... Um, uh, yeah, the agape, uh, the other word, <laughs> uh, bedeeming is low. Um, not sacrificial love, uh, bedeeming is low. Uh, uh, oh, that is Dutch. <laughs> this is, <that> is German. <laughs> uh, um, what is it? What is the love for God without um, asking anything? Unconditional love. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's. <laughs> did you already say it? You get three points. <laughs> Unconditional. Unconditional love means. You know, it's, 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 it was for the prodigal son, it was special. It was not that he was home and he did everything the father asked, me and asked him and the father says, I love you. No, he did everything wrong. And then 
to experience the love of the Father. That you say, oh, I have not deserved your love. But he says, this is the special, this is my specialty. This is my specialty. Not because you deserve it, because I want so bad to give it to you. Unconditional love. So that was for today. The two kinds of obedience. We ended with Israel. And there is hope for Israel. There is a, a song I like to have you listen and, and watch it. And it's, it's called Zion. And yeah, it's the only song I can, can play right here, Mount Zion. And Daughters of Zion. Uh, this is not the beginning. You, you, uh, can you just turn to the very beginning? Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, everything that they sing... You can read it, but underneath you find the passage where it is in the Bible. So the whole song is for the future of Israel. O oh, daughters of Zion, O oh, Abraham's son, Hear the words of your father Hear his promise of love I will make you a blessing So count the stars if you can You will be a great nation I will give you this land Don't fear, oh my daughters, or oh sons of Abraham. I will wash you with water. I will offer the lamb. Though your sins were like scarlet, they'll be whiter than snow. I.
Hallelujah. Yeah. So what we can see is that the disobedience of Israel, God will make it right. It will be his work. Like with us. He will, he will, he will make it work. Uh, the two kinds of disobedience was for me a revelation. Now, the, in the book Living in Sonship, um, uh, there are 12 chapters, and every 12 is an, uh, a revelation about a revelation that I received that I had not known before. Um, uh, if you can, I, I, I love to challenge you and uh, to buy the book, and uh, if you read Dutch, you can do the, the second one also, of course and um, closer to the Father. Because I think it's what the church needs in these days. We need revelation of the Father heart so that we can be sons and daughters living in sonship. Father, we thank you for who you are so that we can be like you are. Not because we try, but because we receive. We want to know you more for who you really are. We want to receive your unconditional love so we can be changed from the inside out. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The church, I think we should pray for for Pastor Hank, for the love of God to continue to flow through him and for his ministry that as he continues in this journey, that through this ministry, that the world will embrace Christ and know truly how God loves us. Shall we go ahead and pray? Father, we want to thank you for your servant you have used. We pray that where the virtue has gone forth, Lord, replenish in many folds in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that the, the love of God will continue to radiate through his ministry and through his life and the families. And Lord, we pray, even as the ones have heard, that our obedience will not be a forceful one, but the one that comes from inside of us, from the heart. Not because we are commanded, because of the love the Father has endowed in us. Father, we thank you for your son. Continue to anoint him, to reveal secret things to him. Reveal things it belongs to the children of God. The secret things belong to God. God, we thank you. We pray that you flourish his ministry. You have put in his hand in the mighty name of Jesus. Are we blessed this morning? Let me see your hand. Shall we clap to the almighty God? Please, there are a lot of books here. Before, Hank has a lot of book tables, but now he's written a book as well. So he's already putting his book on the, his book table as well. So you have to we have to patronize this book table, please. And um, as you do so, it's a support of the ministry. The money you're not giving to Hank is the ministry God has placed in his hand and the family. As you do so, God bless you. If you don't have money now, you tell us, you write, we write your name, you can take it. If you pay, we now give him a uh, back. You, okay, you can pay through your bank uh, by the card. By your pass, you have a lot of them. Pass for tram, pass for anything. You can pass everything for this. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God for that wonderful message again. And we are all blessed by that message. And we are going to run, run along with that message in the mighty name of Jesus. 
uh, announcements. We we'll take uh, announcements and then we we'll go into our offering. First, we again want to welcome all of you uh, to Mount Zion International Parish this morning. A special welcome to our new student. I don't think they are new anymore. After two, three weeks in the Netherlands, you are not new anymore. So you are welcome to the presence of the Lord. Our weekly activities runs like this. Uh, please, can you display it on the screen? Um, on Wednesdays, we have our house fellowship. Some people call it home cell. Yeah, it's a smaller unit, you know. Uh, the body of Christ is divided into smaller parts. And the church, churches around the world, you and I, we form the smaller parts. But in this church, we further divide it into smaller parts. And these smaller parts are composed of the house fellowship. We have four house fellowship uh, centers in Delft. Delft is not very big course so anywhere you reside in Delft one of these centers definitely is just a stone throw from your residence maximum 10 minutes cycling I guess so we already some of you know already um, our house fellowship at TU Delft at Mina and uh, we have the house fellowship for families as well and uh, feel free to join one of these house fellowship uh, uh, centers. Starts from um, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. through 8 p.m. And uh, the Dutch house fellowship uh, running in uh, our pastor's house uh, starts also 7 through 8 p.m. every Thursday. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Okay, Wednesday now. Sorry, Wednesday. I think I'm getting confused with the <laughs> Wednesdays and Thursdays. So all the house fellowship. What, what up to you, Dev? Still Thursday? Okay. All right. So it's TU Dev, the house fellowship in TU Dev that runs on Thursdays. Now all other house fellowship runs on Wednesdays. Praise the Lord. On Fridays, we have our prayer service, um, a time we have dedicated to pray to God. Um, every third Friday of the month, we, uh, we have uh, Bible studies, but now digging deeper into the Bible, not just superficial studying of the Bible, of the Word of God, but we read the Bible and you know, try to analyze the Bible in details and discuss about this. We are still on heaven, or uh, yes, we are still discussing about heaven. You know, heaven is going to be a very, very, very big city. I don't know how large. But of course, so it is the, um, all the information we need to have about heaven as well. Praise God. Okay, what happens next? What's going to happen next Sunday? Ten, it's just Thanksgiving. And, and welcome for our new students. Praise the Lord. No one is excited yet. <laughs> But okay, let me give you details of this day. Maybe it will excite you a little bit. Um, next week, Sunday, we are going to be having our international Thanksgiving and welcome, I'll say special welcome service for our new students. And what do we do? First, Thanksgiving is all about saying, God, thank you for what you've done for me, for giving me life, for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for my, for my sake. So we are going to be thanking God for how he has led us from the beginning of this year, from 1st January through uh, the whole year, I would say. And also, we are going to be singing different, different songs from different parts of the world. Praise the Lord. Of course, I'm excited to hear the French uh, version of, <laughs> praise the Lord, of the songs we've, we've sung here before, I guess. So uh, I guess all of you uh, representing these countries or this region have sent your songs to the choir already. If you've not done so, I, I hope you still have opportunity to do so. No more opportunity. Okay. So you leave it in 2021, December. All right. And then we are going to be, you know, as a way of work, welcoming our new students officially, we are going to be telling them about uh, the culture of the Netherlanders. Praise the Lord. So that's uh, the kind of information, yes, <laughs> we would like to pass. 
uh, around and um, if you come around you get to know more of how to live your life in the Netherlands and how to first to know uh, the Dutch culture and how to uh, I would say live with them as well because uh, of course you have a lot of internationals however the locals are the Dutch and you need to know their do's and don'ts praise the Lord and just uh, interesting I think uh, most of you know that already you know once I was telling, I was asking my friend, can, 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 can I come to your house so that we do an assignment around 6, 7? He said no, because he's going to be having his, his uh, dinner then. And I was like, uh, I should come and join you, of course. And then he said, no, I have already prepared this for myself alone. You should have informed me yesterday because I just went out for the grocery. And it's a common story we know already. His name is Tom. He's a Belgium Dutch, so to say. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, so that when you come on Sunday, you get this information and you are not shocked when you hear things like that. It's not being rude. It's not as if they are not nice, but that is their culture. Praise the Lord. Offering time? The time. Okay. Uh, the program, yes? 9.30, yes. So the program on, on uh, Sunday starts 9.30 dots. So what, what that means is we'll start with our opening prayer, 9.30. So if you are used to coming to the church by 10.15 or 10.30, 10.30, then you'll be late. So please take note of this. This is an adjustment to the, um, I would say, the normal time we start our Sunday service. Normally, we start our Sunday service properly, um, 10 o'clock. Of course, we have our Bible studies from 9.20 through 10, 10. But this time around, the church service starts formally 9.30. So you have to be in the church 10 minute, uh, 30 minutes earlier. Praise the Lord. Please note that we are starting next Sunday service 9.30 because of the program. Okay. Sorry, I have to just take this and as part of the Thanksgiving, we also eat. I know everybody likes food. We're going to eat on that day. I'm going to taste various dishes from all the countries we have here. Amen. So uh, what we do is uh, the church normally prepares some foods, but if you're attached to bring anything, I'd like to taste something from Ethiopia, from Uganda, from Kenya. Not so much something little that we can taste a bit from your country, please. You can break it on that day. And I know this place will be special on that next week. And be in your traditional way. You can be in any dress of your choice from your country. Because that is how we are going to present here on Sunday. Amen. Praise the Lord. Offering. That's another. Oh, okay. Praise the Lord. One more announcement before we take our offerings. As you can see on the board, uh, uh, Pastor Kerry will be coming around to minister on the team that says the power of choice. Praise the Lord. The power of choice. We talked about the Father's heart, the Father's love today. And again, like the prodigal son, it's a choice. However, Praise the Lord. So uh, let's 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 invite. Okay, okay. Uh, let's invite as many as possible uh, people for this uh, uh, program on the 13th of December, and it's going to be awesome again in the presence of the Lord. Come December 11, the youth will be having a program, special program. Praise the Lord. Details of this program will follow shortly. Amen. Okay, if you've got your offering, package, package it. Let's uh, dedicate it to God in prayers. Let's pray. Father, our Savior, the Kings of Kings, the Almighty God, the one who has loved us more than any other person, the one who created us, created the universe. Father, we worship you. Father, we thank you for this love that you have towards us. Father, we thank you for blessing us beyond measures. 
Father, a lot of these blessings, we do not deserve it. However, because we are your children and because we are after your heart, you have blessed us. Financially, you have blessed us. Physically, you have blessed us. Spiritually, you have blessed us. Father, out of the financial blessings, we just want to return a fraction back to you. And we are asking, oh God, that you accept this offering in the mighty name of Jesus. And therefore, we dedicate our offering in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So we're going to bless the name of the Lord with a song from South Africa called Wahamba Nati, which actually means he walks with us or you walk with us. All right. Wahamba Nati, oh Wahamba Nati, oh Wahamba Nati, siabonga. Wahamba Nati, oh Wahamba Nati, oh Wahamba Nati. Sia bonga, siti wahamba nati, wahamba nati, oh wahamba nati, oh wahamba nati, sia bonga, wahamba nati, wahamba nati, siti, oh wahamba nati, oh wahamba nati, sia bonga, sia bonga Jesus, sia bonga Jesus, aye. Sia bonga konyama yesulu, sia bonga Jesu, sia bonga, sia bonga Jesu, sia bonga Jesu, aye, sia bonga konyama yesulu, sia bonga Jesu, sia bonga. Wakamba nati, oh wakamba nati, oh wakamba nati. Ya tokoza Wakamba nati Oh wakamba nati Oh wakamba nati Ya tokoza Ya tokoza Jesu Aye Ya tokoza kakaramba Ya tokoza Jesu Ya tokoza Ya tokoza Jesu Sia togoza kakaramba, sia togoza Jesu, sia nati, oh wakamba nati, oh wakamba nati, sia togoza wakamba nati, oh wakamba nati, oh wakamba nati. Hallelujah. Until he made 
the Lord. This uh, month we are closing the theme Watch and Pray and uh, thank you choir for singing our theme uh, song for this month on your walls of Jerusalem. So Hank we fully connected with each other. You know this church has a love for Zion and um, you know our expectation to see Jesus Christ coming back on that Mount of Olive. Uh, that should be overflowing our hearts. Amen. So, I hope this month you have learned some things about watch and pray. And I think we couldn't have a greater closure about the Father's heart. Because when we watch and pray, it is God that plays that compassion, that urgency in our heart. Amen. So, Hank is still here, and if you want to talk to Hank, please do so. If you want to ask him questions, please do so. And as he said, uh, he came with a book table, and uh, please have a look, and of course, buy something <laughs> for the support of his ministry. So let us pray, brethren. Almighty Father, King of glory, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, we want to say thank you for today. Thank you, Father, for touching our hearts. Thank you, Lord, that you are telling us today that no matter what we have done wrong, we can always come back to you. You will never reject us, but you will hug us. You will embrace us. Lord, you will even make a party for us that we have come back to you. Father, we have learned today that it is never too late to return back to you. Father, and I pray for all of us who have been obedient out of fear unto you. I pray, Lord, that you have turned that around in our hearts. That, Father, from now on, we will, we will be obedient unto you from the love of our hearts. That we want to please you at all sides. Father, we so desperately need you in our lives. 
overflow us with your love. As we have just received a glimpse of your love today, Father, I pray this week in our closets, in our personal time with you, you overflow us with your love. Lord, that you will even silence us, that we will be overwhelmed by your great love. Father, that we will all gonna experience that we are sons and not orphans. Daddy, that is our sincere prayer. And Father, for all those, Lord, who are still loving you from the law side, I pray, Lord, that you reveal yourself to them. Mighty Father, we want to say thank you for everything that you have done for us. What a great sacrifice, Lord Jesus. And Lord, let us become like you, that the things that we do were seen, that we have seen the Father doing it. Father, we want to say thank you. Go with us, Lord, this week in all our difficult things. Lord, when we are having issues at school, in our assignments, in our places of work, Lord, I pray for the families. I pray for our children. Father, keep us safe. Help us. And Lord, when we need, where we need your wisdom, reveal your wisdom to us. Where we need understanding, Father, please reveal your understanding. Lord, when we need provision, please provide for us. Lord, when, where we need health, please, Lord, heal us. Father, Lord, where we need your guidance and direction, please, Lord, direct us. Mighty Father, thank you that everything is in overflow with you. Your word says that our cup runs over. And Lord, I know we're going to experience that this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we share the grace with each other? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.